I feel creative. When I have an exact purpose. I feel creative. When I can breathe fully and deeply. I feel creative when my senses are alert. When I am angry. When I so bubble. I feel creative. When I can be alone to reflect. I feel creative. When I'm working towards change. I feel creative. When I dream. I feel creative. When I feel confident. When I'm not hungry. When I'm in pain. I feel creative. When I don't have to choose between being Mexican or American. I feel creative. When I feel connected to my culture, my family, myself. I feel creative when I'm exposed to views of the world different from my own. When I'm not limited by others' expectations. When I help others to succeed. I feel creative. When I don't have to prove why I'm here. I feel creative. When my partner is accepted by my family. I feel creative when I walk with my friend. I feel creative when I can speak my native tongue. When I play music with my friends. When I'm vulnerable and I think outside the box. But creativity can be lost, damaged, destroyed. Creativity can be stolen. You may feel forced to control your creativity. You are not good enough. That looks terrible. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No one cares. Be rational. Oh my god. No. You have nothing to say. But you don't belong here. You're wasting your time. Fine, fine. I won't. I shouldn't. I can't. And the voices can't be heard. Dig into your mind, to the back where spider webs have grown and ideas have rotted into a pile of procrastination. Close your eyes, feel, embrace, live, react, discover. Discover the pieces of your soul crawling under your skin, restlessly fighting to be free. Free from the depressions and obsessions of your societal norms, released from the dungeons of your rationality. It is the part of you that screams in libraries, <laughs> runs with scissors, and draws outside the lines. It is the part of you that was never in a box. What if you could let your soul be free? If all the chains and shackles holding it from the world were unlatched, and it could scream at the top of its lungs, challenge the status quo, and tell the world that it's wrong. This is your voice. This is your creative soul. Stories are one of the most powerful tools we possess. I love stories. I love writing stories, sharing stories, performing stories, hearing stories, all of it. Stories have this amazing ability to take you to a place you've never been before, live a life you've never understood, and realize emotions you've never been able to access in a real way. I love sharing my stories because it's like taking a piece of me and putting it out in the middle of the street and saying, here it is. Take it as you want, leave it as you will, but you cannot ignore it. A story that has meant a lot for me in my life has been my coming out story. I've shared it a lot of ways, but the moments it's meant the most to me is when someone responds. When my story inspires a dialogue. I love it when my story inspires the telling of other coming out stories, or the story of someone coming to understand their best friend who is gay. Or it inspires a new story of someone learning what it means to be gay in today's oppressive society. I share my stories because I want to see change. I listen to stories because I know how good it feels to be heard. My creative heart is in every story I tell. I found it difficult to describe my homeland. How can I say China could only like be this, not that? We have a 56 an ethnic group living in 34 provinces. So, diversity is indeed everywhere in China. Different dialects, different appearance, and a different culture. It also exists in my family. My father speaks Shanghai dialects with his family, which is nearly a foreign language to me and my mother. And food. One kind of Chinese food, Sichuan food, is popular worldwide. 
But my family's favorite is sweet, no spicy, please. When American people ask me, are Chinese people really not creative? Are they oppressive? I can only answer, oh, some of them, maybe, not all the people. Some of them want harmony, want stability, want uniformity, and they want one word, one dream. The slogan of 2008 Olympic Games. But others, like my mother, who was a leader of an NGO before she retired, has developed a series of art courses to promote the creativity of children living in poverty. She is not alone. Someday, I'm going to join them because I am a Chinese who loves diversity and creativity because I believe diversity and creativity are the only solutions to the uncertainty of the unknown. Movement has always been the doorway to my creative space. Growing up, my mother taught me how to fill my body up with emotion to move my hips and just dance without regard for what it looked like to anybody else so long as it felt good in my body. As I got older, dancing became a way for me to integrate new identities and experiences, explore their intersections, and create something new. Whether it be from my experiences as a ballet student, a modern and hip hop dancer, even a yoga instructor. Movement became my medium to process, sift, reflect, reconnect, and create. What if you made this song your daily song? What if your painting could change the world? Or your poem could inspire action? Or your play could challenge the status quo? I love creative experience of shattering expectations. What does I look like? What kind of life do you think I have? What do you see when you look at me? Female? Yes. Asian? Yes. What else? What do you see? Not so athletic looking, a conservative type, like living in Paris. But I wonder if you ever, ever guessed that I live in seven different countries all by myself. I wonder if you ever know that I speak three different languages every day with my friends and family. Do you know that I write, paint, and play instruments that my lifelong dream is to publish a comic book? And you all, I study how architecture and product design can make us work faster, more efficiently. No, 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 I'm not an architectural product design major. I'm a doctoral student who studies management. So no, I don't think you could have known about me until I told you. I love how people's face changed when they found out I'm not at all what they expected. It's really fun. I highly recommend you try it. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. Growing up, I felt like I needed to hide from the world. At a young age, I realized I wasn't like other kids, and I kept receiving messages that it wasn't okay to be me. It wasn't okay to be gay. And I remember it was just so difficult walking around in my daily life hiding. And then in high school, I found theater. And I used theater as this outlet. Whether I was taking center stage as the loyal companion to Don Quixote de la Mancha, or I was giving the ladies my razzle-dazzle in Chicago, I realized I didn't have to be me. I could get on stage and take the persona of anybody I wanted, and it felt amazing. And to tell you the truth, I just, I used theater as a way to cope, cope with this internal struggle I was having. <laughs> I find comfort on the stage, and over 10 years later, I'm still doing theater, but I'm happy to say that with this group, I get to stand on stage and fully embrace who I am. Sharing my story and building connections is my new passion. Now, I use theater as a way to spark difficult dialogues and promote social change. Now, my creativity is solely based on who I am as a person. Male, biracial, 
gay, student, teacher, advocate, yogi, me. I'm not hiding anymore. Paralyzed in front of my closet, the many options remind me the diversity of people I will serve today at the hospital. I match earrings, colorful pants with my flower hair brand. If I only had one custom, but no, this is who I am. I choose a different style every time. Voila, I'm dressed as a flower bouquet. On an early Sunday morning, I'm riding through the sleeping city, feeling unprepared. Something important is still missing deep in me. I meet my friends, their smiles, hugs, lifts my spirits. We laugh and play. My imagination is released, recharged with joy. Now I'm ready to face the board security guards, the devastation of the waiting rooms, and the stress on nurses' faces. My red nose pulls people into my fantasy, people who are facing the most vulnerable moment in their lives. I'm not a clown. I'm a doctor of laughter. <laughs> I sing, I tell jokes, I dance. In a magical moment, a sad look transforms into a sparkling eyes. It is a miracle that happens every time. What if your dance could fight for women's rights, gay rights, trans rights? What if your research could address refugee rights, native indigenous rights, or deaf rights? What if your photograph could capture socioeconomic disparities and say something? What if your advertisement could have accessibility issues and motivate a solution? Before I came to the University of Oregon, I worked uh, part-time as a glass instructor in California. I specialized in stained glass works, kind of like what you'd see in church windows. I taught all the basic steps. <clears throat> I taught people how to make the designs, cut down the glass, grind it all together, solder it down. And I loved it. I loved working with my hands and showing how other people could do it too. But more than anything, I loved seeing what others created. I remember Rita made a cherry blossom tree to send to her grandmother back home in Kobe, Japan. And then there was Luba who made a matryoshka doll that she said reminded her of her family's Russian heritage. And then there was Melissa, who made a cross that demonstrated her faith. I was amazed by what they created, not only their final pieces, but the meaning and intention behind them. People made all kinds of beautiful glass pieces, but the ones that I remember, the ones that stood out to me, were the ones that reflected their own identities, their own cultures, and their own creativity. Bringing together diverse points of view on a topic is how I foster creative ideas and solutions. For my master's thesis, I knew generally what I wanted to study, local perspectives of international students in Latin America, but I was stuck. I was having a terrible time narrowing it down, so I talked to a lot of different people. I had gone to Costa Rica for a conference and I met a woman working in a small town nearby. We talked over a soccer game in the center of town and she threw out the idea of me interviewing host mothers. Host mothers may be the most affected with international students actually living in their homes. I returned a year later and did exactly as she suggested. Working with host moms has been fantastic, and I would not have done it without taking the time to stop and ask. For me, eliciting diverse perspectives, that's absolutely critical to creativity. At five years old, people ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said with conviction, I am going to be an artist. For as long as I can remember, I've always loved to draw. When I have a paintbrush in my hand, I exist in a different world. A world where time stops, worries disappear, and I just am. A world of shadows and light, of gradients of color, of shapes and negative space. A world where mountains and oceans and folds in clothing, wrinkles in skin, echo each other. A world where opposites complement, boundaries are blurred together, motion is captured in stillness. Where conversations are held, questions are posed, without 
any words. A world where dreams come true in two dimensions. Drawing reminds me of my childhood, of growing up in China where I first discovered my passion. It connects me with my family, my history, my culture. I'm not a professional artist now, but I channel all of my creative energy into everything that I do as a psychologist in training. I am designing research projects. I'm illustrating concepts in my teaching. I am drawing connections with my clients. And I'm creating change through advocacy. Art is my calling. Creating is how I can make a contribution to this world. It is who I am. Unfiltered, unconstrained, free. What if a performance, your performance, could inspire other people to act? It could be your dance, your business plan, your sculpture, your interior design. It see the right, the wrong, the good, the bad, and does something about it. Your stand-up act could change lives. Your recipe could influence the future. Your poem could make an impact. A spark. A change. A legacy. A legacy. I use my creativity to help inform and support those that I care about. I use my creativity to foster positive connection between the self and others. I use my creativity to bridge cultural divides on our campus, to cook delicious fusion foods, to promote joyful collaboration in the world. <coughs> I use my creativity to remind myself of where I've been and where I'm going. I use my creativity to share stories that promote social change. I use my creativity to inspire people to rethink their opinion of others. I use my creativity to calm anxious minds and heal broken hearts. To make a place to work, play, and love. To connect with others by discussing difficult topics and to share my story with the world. What about your creativity? There is a vitality, a life force, an energy of quickening that is translated through you into action. And because there is only one of you in all of time, this expression is unique. And if you block it, it will never exist in any other medium, and it will be lost. The world will not have it. It is not your business to determine how good it is, nor how valuable, nor how it compares with other expressions. It is your business to keep it yours, clearly and directly, to keep the channel open. Mark McGrath.